Hey guys, what's up? It's Manuel Infinite. This is part three of the Killer Peter series. If you haven't watched the other two parts, it will be down in the description. And without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Just like that, everybody on board was able to escape, and that was the end of the ghost cruise because it sank completely. We are now back on a yacht, and it is the Dalko brothers. They say, thank you so much. I never knew that we would meet an apostle. He says, oh yeah, I pissed myself when I saw your cool move, and they are trying to imitate it, and bro, why do you just admit that you did that? Anyway, the Dalko brothers say, have you met the legendary Peter? He says, of course, the rumors say that he destroyed a whole nation like a tsunami. And of course, the oh gosh, Simon says, what? destroy are you looking down on disciple peter they say oh that wasn't our intention he says that man is a tuna and you know phonetically it's like tsunami so it's a dad joke but that's so cringe and her mc is just like bruh what the heck is going on he then hugs him and he says i heard you guys from peter recently he says what peter knows us he says say that again and her mc just like puckers his lips like really you gotta be joking me he then winks at her mc and he also tells them that they're going to be future apostles as well and they're like me and an apostle no way we love peter Anyway, our MC says, by the way, Mr. President, can a bodyguard rest while on duty? He says, yeah, yeah, you should. Simon also says, thank you so much for the president. And our MC looks forward to what's about to happen. He then says, 3,348. That's the number of islands in Korea, and that's actually pretty crazy. And the one where Simon was on, Uwil Island, is really remote. And he wonders why the heck they found him and how they did that. He says, right now, Raphael will be gnashing his teeth because of the humiliation. And he says, don't get ahead of yourself, Raphael. This is just the beginning of my revenge. And yeah, this is absolutely awesome. We hear, who is this? What the heck? It is a blind woman, and of course she says, no way, it is the old and married mad from before. She then touches his face, and he said, Anji one who doesn't support us, how can somebody change so easily? He says, you brat, you brat, your eyes were working so much back in the past. He says, you kept asking me to marry you and followed me around. And then she hits his back like, what do you mean, what the heck, get out of here, because I did not say that. And yeah, she's joking. Anyway, he mentions, what is Raphael skimming now? I'm so confused. There's a lot of questionable things about the hospital and the ghost crews. They're both silent. And she then says, Raphael wants to eliminate Peter. And we are back to 2013 at the Divine Cathedral and the former church of the Glory Club. Also, finally, we got a name for this lady. Her name is An Ji Won. People are discussing that Korea has become independent and of course the chaos and stuff has subsided. He puts his hand on the Bible and somebody mentions, I believe that you know my sons and daughters. This moment, I command the 12 disciples to dissolve and it seems like it's finally over. But there was one person who was against that. Oh my gosh, and it was Raphael who's angry. He was a current boss of glory and the adopted son of priest Gabriel. He says, Father, no, come on. I cannot accept this. This is the adopted son, by the way. He mentions, what about honor? No, glory. Glory, our business is growing. He then says as he looks out the window, they're the Lord's precious children who put their lives on the live to save millions. And so, of course, you may now leave Raphael. We then see a statue of Jesus, my best friend. And of course, oh my gosh, Raphael is punching the statue right here. He says, what happens to me? He says, this isn't who you are, dad. Come on. We see the statue fall down. And he then says, in the end, I want what's beneficial for the people of this country, and there is him sitting on the throne with his father, and oh my gosh, she really eliminated him. Anyways, we find out that as soon as he went on the throne, he moved really quickly, and there was a halo effect of the Honor Orphanage. And so, the Aegis' best organization of killers became known as a glory club. He searched all over the world to find the best perfect disciples. As you see them right here, some of them are unnamed, but we know that that lady was one, and also, of course, Nathaniel. Pretty much, he wanted to expand his business globally, and in order, that, in order for that to happen, he needed to eliminate Peter, our MC, and yeah, bro, no chance. Anjiwan says, that really gives me the chills and I really don't like him. She then says as she grabs her MC, wait a second, there is a disciple that also gives me chills. And oh my gosh, they then look at him. And it is Kageo. What is he doing here? Even the dog is kind of pissed. They then, Simon and her MC, then pull her up and they drag her out of the room. And yeah, this is so funny. Nonetheless, our MC explains that he won't bury bear his claws at us right now. And she also says, by the way, if he does anything crazy, do not stop me and I'm going to take him out. He then says with a smug look, really, what are you really trying to do here on... She says, how about you go take him out because I can't see him. Really, this is way too funny. They then open the door and well, just like that, even in the Versace bedsheets, he has disappeared. He says, it's highly likely that he went to that place. You see a very eerie looking building with a square opening from above. Wait, who even made this? This is actually pretty sick. Somebody says, 
Peter hasn't shown his face once. So tell me exactly what happened, my disciples. And oh my gosh, look at these guys in white. These guys look absolutely awesome. They say Kageo was defeated. Huh, Peter, Peter was that strong, huh? He then says, hey dude, are you scared or something? Come on, just stop eating protein and go work on your <laughs> work on your skills. And yeah, this guy's probably a bodybuilder. You know, somebody holding a sniper says, what are you guys doing being so unsexy? And yeah, this guy needs to pause right there. Nonetheless, we see Gabriel's, or not Gabriel, sorry, Raphael saying, guys, why can't we even catch this old dude? Come on, bro. And bro, this old dude is probably going to wreck you in the future. We see the door gets shattered in an instant. And the sniper wannabe says, that was unnecessary. And yeah, bro, that sniper is going to be not be able to do nothing in close range. It is Simon, and he still has the scars on his body. Of course, Raphael says, oh, I'm so relieved you're here. He says, it's a pity, though, because what about Peter? Is he still alive? Anyway, he says, is it true? Raphael says, um, sorry, I don't really get what you're saying. He says, I'm asking if you annihilated the wandering ghost blade, Yuika. He explains, she had a place to stay and rely on like an idiot. But, you know, that things like this happen. He says, Simon, so you're asking me, right? You're asking me if I should take full responsibility. And then he just lets out a grin like, yeah, bro, I was going to reveal this one day. And look at him, bro, Simon's gritting his teeth. He looks super angry as he remembers their agreement. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. If I was in that agreement and this happened, I would be absolutely pissed. Anyway, he says, listen up, disciples. One of one by one, you guys will get out of here, or else whoever's here, I'm going to take out. And look at the blood in his body still and on his mouth and eyes. This dude really is going to get revenge for what happened to his loved one. Raphael says, gah, bruh, really? Just look around you. Do you really think you're taking out everybody here? The bodybuilder says, did you just come here to complain, boy? And yeah, bro, just go do your reps, bro, or do your bench press. I'm just kidding. The sniper also says, it's not sexy again. And why did this guy keep saying sexy, sexy, bro? This guy's weird. He says, no one's leaving. Fine, let's all die together as he rushes towards them. But then somebody kicks him, but our, our boy just manages to dodge it. He says that of course Simon talks way too much. He goes to attack this dude as well, and he gets hit. Oh my gosh, that was a pretty good one. He then of course seems to have the upper hand, and he manages to strike him with his claw, but he dodges as well. And it seems like there is a riot shield. Where did this come from, bro? He's about to get punched with it, and that's exactly what happens. He gets sent flying to the wall. He mentions that this dude is really strong, and he has a fist right here thinking he's Saitama from One Punch Man. But then somebody stops them, and this guy's like the dancer, that Brazilian dancer from Tekken. He says, you know what, I'll use my arms if you make me angry, and yo, that's actually pretty cold. Anyway, he says to Deus, move your ugly dirty foot out of here. He says, come on, don't you guys ever have any compassion? Kageo explains, yeah, he, oh yeah. He actually lost way too much blood, and so he definitely needs to come back here after he's regained his strength. We see a beautiful looking building, and that's where he was. He then breaks the glass and leaps out of here. One of them says, you bullied him and ran away, Philip, come on. This guy says, don't worry, we're going to chase him and eliminate him one day. Raphael is just playing with his fingers like he is trying to be really that villain in any anime or manhwa. He said, he's just a child hitting puberty, don't worry, we'll meet him again soon for sure. We now see Raphael looking out in the broken glass. He says, how do you know about all these things? He says, surely somebody was helping him. He says, it might be Yoncheng Choi, because of course they saw the owner of the Deha group there. He then laughs hysterically saying, is he really helping Peter? And he says, come on, I really needed another warehouse for weapons. And it seems like he's going to invade the Deha group. He says, disciple Johan. He says, what do you want? Stop acting like you don't know. For somebody who literally eliminated, he eliminated Gabriel's disciple, he said this guy should be nothing. And so, of course, he explains that you know that this is a large entity, right? He says 372 people. That's the amount of people inside of his security team, Esketo. And so he says, let's go and eliminate him. And please do not, I hope Yun Chang Choi doesn't die. Anyways, we are now watching the news and there is a big word of blood on top of this building. It says Alipede and the public is uneasy. While Simon says, this is really strange. Our MC says, how the heck did they write that on the building? Anyway, he is a current S-rank assassin. His name is Alipede, and he is also Disciple Johan. He explains that several years later, he assassinated the former one, and his alternate name is Alipede, like I said, and they wonder what they should do. 
We see a group of soldiers protecting this man or this little young boy. Somebody here says, I greet your highness. I'll make sure you return safely. And oh, let's go. This is a real Joel Hunt. Bro, this guy looks so sick like a seasoned veteran. And he is 59 years old. Of course, he is a former disciple. And he has 359 missions with a 100% success rate. Bro, that's actually wild. He then says, I will wrap things up here, you know, earlier than you thought. The young man is like, what do you mean, sir? He then stabs the guy's throat that is actually one of the soldiers, but he catches it saying, how did you see through my disguise? He explains it was way too obvious because, of course, your scent was really different. He then has a clothes taken off and he sees a shadow. Anyway, we see gunshots and gunfire and all of the other soldiers are dead, but Joan seems to be doing a pretty good job. He puts on his binoculars and he takes off his shoes, explaining, I don't want you to, of course, drool over them because it's one of the way he can be sensed. And he says, I have this feeling that his presence and sound have completely vanished. And you really wonder why he can't feel a thing. But then we see his eyes right here. He says, that's impossible because there's like a knife floating in their air. It's a karambit. He says, no, but then he gets hit right in the face. He tries to shoot right here, explaining he can't really see a thing. He looks nervously left and right, and oh my gosh, bro, this is the one mission that he thinks he can't complete. This is actually crazy to me, guys. Like, th this dude literally reminds me of the old Peter, but like a bit more cooler because of his outfit. But I wonder what Peter was rocking when he was still in the business. He says, this is the blood of an honored disciple. I wonder what it's like. I guess they are watching the recording, and Simon says, that's really impossible. RMC just says, listen, that Alipede guy has condemned so many people. We should also assume that he has already have his next target, which is Yon Chang Choi, and so they need to protect him. Because of course, Apostle Johan or you know Alipede always does the bidding himself. And so we see right here is Alipede, and he is standing right over Yon Chang Choi. I wonder if this is real time or if it's just a vision of some sorts. Simon says, whatever, I'll ask one more time, Junior Jiwon, are you really blind? And <laughs> bro, he's really trying to test her. Alan Jiwon says, you're so annoying. And she says, do you see this? There is a sort of ear. I don't know what this is exactly, a hearing aid, but it actually explains everything that's going on. And she hits us back again because he said, really, you must be lying. Our MC says, come on, sit down and sit down. These glory team will now do anything they can to purge the people they need gone. And so Simon, he needs to be he needs to be the one to find them before they do. Because of course, his sisters and his brother will get hurt. And he's talking about the other apostles in the past. We see an ice cream convenience truck right here. I'm guessing this will be their sort of undercover place. He is now at the CO station. He says, I'll bring them back home. And guys, I am so hyped to see the old apostles and see them go up against these new dogs and yeah, they're definitely going to put them in their place. He says, Mr. President, are you alright? And Young Cheng Choi seems to be quite nervous. He explains this is Anji Wan and she's super nervous and ecstatic because, you know, this is of course a genius hacker and his group is definitely important when it comes to that kind of stuff. He explains that I made up my mind after the ghost cruise. Songu is affiliated to Glory, but he's a complete antidote to Glory Club. And he says, I knew this day would come. And so I didn't think a deep connection between Deha and Gabriel would of course be severed like this. He explains that Raphael tried to purge him and is now trying to do something he already predicted. And that means that our boy Yong Chang Choi is kind of smart. We hear Alipede. He's also somebody who has never failed. And he always takes out his, you know, targets cruelly. He also explains that, oh, Johan was attacked by him. And yeah, that's pretty much how he became the new Johan. And our MC says, you guys can't ask Glory for help because of this. And so she, they are in the armory as she explains, yep, that's why I've also brought people to help you. And yep, guys, this is what Johan mentioned before, the 372 people. This is es Escudo. And this is Europe's number one security detail. And yo, I'm definitely hyped to see these guys in action. I think I think these guys look definitely better than the Brazilian one that um, Nathaniel had. He says, this kid is a glory killer. Really? Are you the lover of the president or something? This guy's name is Costa, and he is also using the KC fighting method, and he is the A-team leader. He throws something at our MC, and our MC catches it, and it seems to be a pen. He then puts it back inside of his own suit, and Costa says, Whoa, would you look at this guy? He's actually quite good. He says, You know what? Make sure you're not a burden to us, Escudo. And yeah, I think our MC is definitely not a burden to you guys. You guys are A rank, and our MC is like SSS rank. Anyway, we are now back at the Deha Group Security Operations Center, and we see our goat, Anji Wan. <laughs> and look at the dog just looking at it cutely as well. She says, Even an ant can't get in noticed, and so this is really effective. There are all also thousands or maybe hundreds of CCTVs in blind spots and even with the Skudo there but um guys the security team is nervous and they're literally sweating and get um I don't know why that anyway let's there's probably a reason for that he explains that forget about security we're all dead meat 
And oh, it's because of all of the Alipede rumors and stories, and yeah, because Alipede incinerates all these dudes. Anyway, the one behind him is Marco. He says, guys, why is Europe's strongest shield so scared? And this is the B-team leader, Marco, and bro, this guy definitely has charisma, and he's pretty cool. He then smashes his hand on top of An Ji Won's desk. He says, we should not show our nervous side to this very beautiful senorita here. She says, yeah, please piss off the senorita. He then says as he looks at her, I'm not sure how amazing this guy is, but trust me, our shield is impenetrable. And Diego also explains, you want to come to the Italian restaurant with me later? NW bro, this guy got Riz. He then yells out, and this is honestly a W thing to do. He says, come on, where's the energy? We are the strongest experts, guys. And yeah, strongest security experts, and energy is definitely a big part when it comes to staying calm. One of them mentions, team leader Marco, you need to step outside. He explains, let's go and catch Alipede. Let's do it. He then says, Senorita, we'll be going on a date, all right? She then says, you know, kind of pissed off, whatever, I want kimchi, but yeah. She says, Senorita, my butt, and oh, she blushed and yell. I'm guessing that Anji Wan doesn't really get compliments, probably because she literally lives in a bunker. Anyway, we then see her MC, and he's getting a tour of the house. He says, do you know what the key to this protection is? He says, as he puts his hand on the shoulder, it's experience, and bro, our M... <laughs> Our MC probably got like 70 years of experience at this point. He says that there's no way that Alipede has not been found yet. He wonders if Alipede is already inside of some sort, because of course, that's the only thing he can think of. We see gunshots begin to occur, and everybody looks nervous. Casa then points over there, like, hey, guys, go to the 36th floor, and I'll take care of these floors. We see Costa looking at his watch, and he seems like our MC is actually kind of suspicious of this dude. This guy explains that somebody has been killed, and he says, wait, the head... The head is missing. They're all wondering who it is actually is. And they say, wait a second, it's team leader Marco. And oh my gosh, this dude says, how the heck did he get in? And they're all pissed as to what happened. And it seems like your MC was wrong. He says, if I was Alipede, the only way to break in here is like that. And he says, I need to think more like Alipede if I want this mission done. Our MC says there's only one answer to this. Alipede is inside the building, and everybody's nervous, including those two, like, look how large these bodybuilder women are. Maybe they're just like that, but yeah, they're pretty cool characters in the story. He then says Alipede truly is among us, and it seems like they're gonna download the game and play- Oh, never mind, it's not the game among us, but anyway, they all receive a video on their cellular devices, and it seems like it is CCTV footage. The lights are off, but of course the CCTV has some built in. Marco is running and he's confused. He then gets dragged away and we see blood coming out of his fingertips as he tries to grip and it doesn't do anything. And there is somebody standing here with the head. And oh my gosh, this is so brutal, guys. This guy planned this thoroughly so easily. And Alipede likes to hide himself, but he won't do that anymore. And we see it is written on his face. Nobody will come out of here alive. And let's see who wins old man. And he's referring to our boy Peter. And wow, guys, I, th I think this is definitely going to be one of the hardest matches, matchups to the series so far. Costa then pushes our MC against the wall and our MC has no reaction. He says, what do you mean anyone here could be Alipede? If we have a Trider, then it's probably 78% likely to be you. And he says, no, you know what? You say it as if you were waiting for it to happen. Prove it, because I pro I think that you're the most suspicious. And then he says, would you look at him? I know he's not your average Joe, but our MC's, oh, our MC has a fist ready to hit this guy in this liver. And it seems like he was ready this entire time. The secretary says this is exactly what Alipede wants to happen, and he says, don't worry, it should almost be finished. Of course, he says, what is that? We then are back at the security room, and he says, we're gonna, we're gonna die, we're definitely not gonna survive. They finally finished analyzing it, and we find out that nobody has entered the building from the 36 floors. And so we see it is, of course, our girl, as she wonders, this dude must be really smart, huh? Jiwon then begins to ponder, mentioning he's made an opening for himself to escape, but what the heck is it? She notices something to her left, and it is one of the dudes. He yells out for Alipede, and he has appeared, and no, man, these two people have guns, and they're just hopeless against it. They then shoot, but it seems like he is dead now. They then confirm, but oh, he, they then pulled up into the air, and they are stuck hanging, and he says, catch me if you can, and that was such a cruel scene. She says, it was so strange. It doesn't, CCTVs usually don't capture sound, but when she got here, the CCTVs changed to record sound, and I'm really wondering what's happening. Also, in the video of Marco's ambush, sound wasn't recording, so that means it was it was not today. Wait, so that means that Marco might be a fake imposter. She, bro, she's walking with her cane and she's going crazily. She's calling onto her senior. She says that dude really is clever. For some reason, he keeps sending me a signal as well, and that is, I'll tell you when I see you. 
but then somebody walked right past her and it is Marco. Oh my gosh. He then says, Juwan, Juwan, are you okay? It seems like she's going to take this on herself, but Costa is in the way. He says, please move. I'll explain when I'm back. He says, fine, whatever. But, you know, we can't actually let you go for one more reason. And he says, until your suspicions are cleared, then of course, we're not going to let you go through here. Our MC says, I'll break your legs, you know. And Costa says, do it, if you can. Our MC's eyes right here activated the hunter mode and do not mess with our MC. We, send, we see Anji Wan and she is inside of this sort of storage room. She says, you must be great, Alipede, but no one can find you. You really are great. However, you chose the wrong opponent because the first thing I did here was turn on the audio recording function of CCTVs. And so she definitely knew that that old dude Marco was definitely him. He says, your deduction is almost right. She says, Alipede, no. Or should I say team leader Marco? He says, Senorita. She mentions that things were strange at first because I smelled your scent before. I remember that disgusting smell. It is of a disguise, I see. And she says, take it off and greet me with your real face. She says, what an honor to see Elipede's real face. And yo, guys, this is not Gojo. Everybody relax in the comments, but it kind of looks like Alucard for some reason with white hair. This guy's name is Johan. His specialty is assassination, 187 missions with 100% success rate. His rank is an apostle. And yo, this guy is like the opposite of Gojo. He literally has red eyes and bruh. The, bro, these character designs are so, so awesome. I just love this manhwa. He says he wanted to meet her first, and she says, Come on, stop talking trash. For the record, I only go for good-looking men. He says, Are you alright? Because, of course, this dude is definitely good-looking. Anyway, she says, Take care of yourself. But she says in her head, Something is wrong. It's like the air is electrified or something, and I wonder if he did something. She then smashes on the light, and it turns off, and he says to himself, I knew it. This girl really is blind. Oh, and we find out that Anji Wan was actually, she didn't, she wasn't born blind, but she of course became blind. And she has something that people don't have, it's echolocation, oh. So she can use the sounds to analyze what's around her to the maximum, as you see an image of Elipede standing right in front of her. She says, you're my prey, as she is right, oh my, bro, she is right behind him and she's about to swing at him. He manages to react enough to put his hands in front of him, but he still gets sent to the wall. He then says with a chuckle, Oh, so you must be one of Gabriel's hunters, I see. She then throws her can at him because she does not care about all this yapping. We find out out of all the senses, eyesight is- Oh my gosh, bro. 80 is 80% above the rest. I'm not gonna lie, guys. My vision's not that good, and yeah, I can see how eyesight can be definitely a lot. She says, How is it possible for him to do that? And he literally caught onto the stick. She says, Just how did you know? He says, You know, humans have a thing called neuroplasticity. If one loses their sense, the other senses make up for it. But he says, you can't beat me because I was blind since I was born. Yo, that's actually crazy, guys. And look at him right here. This is going to be an awesome fight. And there's even a light here. And yeah, bro just really thinks he's a protagonist now. She says, no way. The reason why she felt that eerie feeling was because of this barcode of some sorts. And I, I wonder if that is a high frequency she was talking about. He says, you've learned echolocation well, but no matter how hard you try, you cannot overcome something. And that is despair. And look at his echolocation, it's literally red instead, and he can sense fear. She says, I understand why it had to be me, huh? He says, that's right. And this guy has a barcode on him, like, bro, you're gonna get scanned at the grocery checkout. Just kidding. He then charges towards her, saying, blind people are annoying. And um, bro, you actually just called yourself annoying as well. But just again, guys, this guy looks super dope, and I'm really hyped for the fight against Peter. Costa says do it, if you can, and of course, our MC goes to hit him, and it is a hook. However, he then rolls on his body and runs away, and Costa's like, wait, how the heck did that bro just do that? They're trying to chase after him, but of course he says, no, don't worry, let him be. He mentions that our MC actually grabbed his jugular vein, and he could have easily, oh, he could have took this guy out easily if he wanted to. He says, don't worry, I'm worried about a newbie, so let's just follow him instead. We are back to the main fight, as the Apostle says, You were the first person that I wanted to target. He then leaps at her and she gets sent flying into some boxes of some sorts. We find out that this high frequency exceeds 20,000 hertz, that's actually crazy. And so of course, for normal people and experts like her, they find it difficult to actually feel the sound. And it's pretty much the sound that bats are able to make, and that's definitely so hard to overcome. She gets a flashback to her personal trainer, and he says, you're almost the best. He says, it's very surprising actually. She then says, wait a second. What do you mean? Who are you talking about that's better than me? He says, no, don't worry. Miss Chiwon is the best so far when it comes to your echolocation and such. However, there seems to be something different. He says, there's something though. 
Somebody has suppressed that skill domain. She then says, it's probably a non-human. He says, no, they are. And it is a person blind at birth. And yup, guys, it is Nathaniel. And this is absolutely crazy. Because of his neuroplasticity, all of those have transcended humans. And bro, guys, just look at, yo, look at his eyes. Yo, this guy, oh, this guy looks so awesome. And so, for example, his hearing, smell, touch, and taste are so good, and it's pretty much like he can see in general, and that's actually crazy. She gets hit with a karambit on her back, and probably because you should be opening more cases in CSGO and gambling. Yeah, don't do that, guys. Nonetheless, she says she trained for 25 years, but this dude is at such a high level to the point where she says she maybe needs like 100 more years to do this. She then also says that it's pretty much like he has a 360 degree camera on him at all times, and it looks like she is actually done for. Just kidding, she says she has a special plan. He then begins to walk towards her, and he says you cannot overcome the difference because you were once able to see because she wasn't born blind, but then he then begins to yell out like what the heck is this? She says that's right, I know you're very strong. However, you're more sensitive to sound if you are blind. She is then scratching this thing across the wall, and she goes to attack him while he is panicking. However, he then, yo, <laughs> he then smiles at her, and it seems like our boy was just acting. Give this man an Oscar right now. He then launches two more karambits, and she gets hit on the arms, on the forearms, and it has strings attached to them, and she gets kneed right to the face, but she blocks it with her two arms. He says it really was a shame, but you weren't as bad, and this is reminding me of the same scene that we were shown when he eliminated the other Johan, and it's finally over. He says, I'm just gonna wait until Peter appears as he goes to stab her, but our MC just knees him right to the face. Oh my gosh, that was hard. He gets sent flying, and of course, she then wonders, what the heck, senior, why are you here? He says, senior. G1. And she says, oh yeah, I am your senior, because obviously he's younger. She then says, be careful, because this dude is Alaplead. He then wonders if he is blind, and he mentions, so you're the one that's bothering G1, huh, my senior? He explains, how does this make sense? How the heck did he just block my ambush attack? We see Alipede and he is wondering, what the heck, this can't be Peter, he's way too young. Of course, we see the other people mentioning, where are you, which way did you go? It seems like, her, or like he throws a karambit at her MC, but her MC just catches it easily. He says, Alipede, huh? I see. He says that he's actually gone already, and he's actually hiding behind this wall. They're then yelling, come on, I'm going to catch Alipede, let's do this. He then ruffles through his hair, as he says, no matter how I think about it, it's way too strange. I thought I blocked the attack, but I actually didn't. And he says his feeling is ridiculous, and yeah, bro, look at his left arm, it's literally shaking, and yeah, this is going to be an awesome fight. We see Alexander or the dog literally licking her. She mentions, come on, stop. It hurts so much I'm going to die because that dude stabbed her. She then kicks off uh, the blanket because her MC says, don't worry, you won't die. She also mentions, wait, are you going to do a monologue? Because he's literally in the thinking... <laughs> He's in the thinking pose, and yeah, I just absolutely love this manhwa. Our MC wonders, if I was a blind person, there's only one answer to disguise myself as Marco perfectly. He then calls Costa. He says we've searched, but he's disappeared without a trace. Costa really wonders where he's going, or where he went, as he's holding onto this briefcase. She then also says, he's probably going to assassinate the President Choi right now and as soon as, soon as he can, and Costa yells out, everybody, quickly, Alpha Team to A-Wing, and Bravo Team to the utmost floor. He then says to the other people, everyone make sure you're on high alert because anything could happen. As you see this lady right here, the secretary as well as the other, well I guess it's a substitute team leader, they're worried. He says, stay focused and not nervous. RMC wonders, there must be only one method that is actually f effective. Costa then says, you know what, I'll go see the president and come on, I need to report this to him. RMC then ponders, wait a second, the only way to disappear that well is to disguise himself again and he might, oh my gosh, I think Johan might have taken out Costa and replaced him with himself. Anyways, G1 says, come on, we can't sit here. Or she then gets up like she's not injured, and he says, no worry, don't worry, it's fine. I placed a drug in the president's room as a countermeasure, and she says, wait, what do you mean? And oh my gosh, somebody is stopping Casa from entering. It is a two bodybuilding girls, and they say nobody is allowed the room. Even so, you cannot enter, even though he's, you know, the president of the emergency and the team squad. He says, come on, this is actually really urgent. She says, I understand. However, please go back to the way you came from. We hear, team leader Costa, and it is a woman. As a president secretary, I will relay this message for you. He hands her the briefcase with a, it has a passcode so it is secured. He says, whatever you do, don't open it. And she then says, should I destroy 
destroy him, and yeah, you guys should probably destroy this dude. Our MC is walking around, and of course, G1 says, I'm certain that he has an assistant. Our MC is walking, talking on his sort of ear device, and somebody, the other people here, are looking at him, and these guys look kind of suspicious. Of course, this dude is finally on Alipede's radar, and they are now on the 58th floor as our MC runs into Costa here. He says, don't worry, nothing bad will happen, as our MC says, I'll call you later. It seems like Costa really is Alipede, as he says he remembers our MC sent, and they're just standing here nervously and just quiet I'm guessing. Of course Costa says he doesn't know who I am and I'll take care of you after I eliminate Choi Yun Chang. He then says, Costa, I had an important document that needed to be given to the president. He says, is that why you're curious? Our MC says, no, no, that's not the reason. Of course, he's remembering back to the info given to him that this dude was a D-ranked killer from Glory. He says, no way, that hit really was real. His scent is of a young man, however, his skills are definitely not like those. He says that he's bulky and controlling his breathing, and so this guy's not B-rank, no, not even A-rank. He says, no way, this guy might be Peter. He then says Peter, and her MC just like exclaims like, what do you mean? And he doesn't even budge an itch, an inch. He says, do you know the man Peter? He says he was a legend of a glory killer, and everyone wants to get him because of the bounty. Our MC says, since we're on the topic, I'm curious about something. Alipede, and this guy just shivers as well. He says, I heard he was mostly active in Europe, but for somebody like that, why did he come to Korea? And why the heck does he only fight in the dark? He says, it could be that he's blind or some sorts, and yeah, this guy just got caught in 4K. Our MC says, because he already knows this, you know, he already knows the truth, no matter how great Alipede is, he's surely nothing compared to Peter, and look at his Costa's face or this disguise, it's starting to wear off. He also says, I forgot to give this back to you. You said it was a valuable pen, and so, you know, I didn't want to have it for too long. And our MC remembers to when Costa threw it at him. He says, that's valuable, and make sure you give it some love. He says, oh yeah, this pen is difficult to get in Europe. That's why. But our MC says, oh, I gave you the wrong one. It's such a precious pen and you didn't recognize it. And yup, our MC is just rage baiting this guy. He wonders if Costa's eyes are bad, and Costa says, you know what, stop beating around the bush. He explains that prison guards and other firefighters have certain habits, and so of course, he says just like you did before, you have a habit of reading braille with the fingertips as he was doing so with a coke can, and oh my gosh, the last time he saw Costa with a coke can, he was not touching the braille. He then says off and the lights turn off and they are now in the darkness. We see the Karambit come out from Kasa or Alipede. He goes to stab our MC and there seems to be some solid cuts. Our MC seems to be struggling and this seems very hurtful. And of course our MC is mentioning that all of his attacks are fatal if he gets stabbed even once. They reach the 20th floor and they jump out at the same time. Of course Jiwon's like what's happening? No, reply if you're dead and... Wait, how is he going to reply if you're dead? Anyway, our MC says, Just now, I had a conversation with Alipede, and he seems to actually have been cut a bit. He says, First, tell them to find Costa's body, because of course, it seems like Costa was the one taken out. He mentions that Alipede is truly dangerous, and he has the cuts around his body and his hands. Alipede is now taken off the costume, and dang bro, this guy's jacked, but he's also hiding in the vents. He says, No way. I stabbed him 52 times. They should all be fatal. There's no way he was able to stop my attacks, right? But he says in that instant, this dude created tribal luminescence. And it's pretty much like, you know, when you rub something or because of friction, there's like a little light that pops out. And there was a, oh my gosh, our MC was using the pen to combat his karambit to get a spark of light. Our MC is a legend. Alipi then begins to sweat, saying, I, this is the only time that I really want to eliminate somebody outside of commissions because our MC is just that skilled. He says a plan has changed. Use that now. And it seems like he actually has some inside people working for him. We see somebody running. It is our MC. He says, come on. Alipi just made a smoke screen to divert attention, you know, figuratively. And Jiwon says, what the heck? Did you find Alipi's assistant? He explains it must be somebody that's able to be there during the most important moments. Somebody who can go in and out the room. And he says, yes, there's only one person. And it is Yun Chang Choi's secretary as she has a syringe right behind. It. And no way, I did not expect this at all. Our MC dashes quickly and he says, come on, we gotta go and save his life. Alipi then hears, Johan, this is bad. He says, what's wrong? We find out that Sanchez and the Escuda members are headed towards them. He says, what? Who's Sanchez? Oh, that's team Lar uh, team leader Marco's subordinate, I see. He mentions that they're all they're already dead. And yo, I thought that that dude was suspicious, the yellow-haired guy. But dang, I definitely did not expect this. The secretary says, I'll finish him off, Johan. Next is that young guy. And he says, wait, about that... What are the two of you doing? And it is the oh, it is the two bodybuilder ladies, and they say, tell us the truth. She then says, it is something, it is an important letter, and so she tries to enter. 
They say, oh yeah, sure, that's not suspicious at all. You know, you may enter. They then grab the briefcase and they say, is the important document this? And it is a holder for a syringe. And oh my gosh. They then demand an explanation and she says, you seem confident that you can beat me. And obviously she then says there's no way she can beat these two because these guys are, they've been in the military for 13 years and they've been in 270, 70, guys, these girls' names are Grande and Ariana and probably a reference to Ariana Grande. She says die as she goes to stab one of them, but it seems like she just grabs her arm that's so small and breaks the knife in half and she's about to crush her arm. She says, I'm going to die either way. I have no choice. She says, please, I'm powerless please save me and spare me they then say answer the questions where is johan and oh my she just gets stabbed by johan right in the neck he says johan is what were you gonna snitch on me or something they then ask if that dude is johan and he says it doesn't even matter you're an obstacle to me and you won't be leaving here alive he then says i need to take out the witnesses and please know these girls seem so chill ariana and grande and this is so brutal if they get hurt our mc is there with jiwon and she says what is this and no, they've been, I think they've been taken out, guys. This is so sad. They say, Johan, why do you need to do this? Ariana says, please, take it. He's looking for you. He then picks up the phone. And Alipede says, we didn't come to finish what we started. And he mentions, come to the warehouse on the 10th floor basement alone. And our MC's wondering what he's scheming. He says, don't worry, little boy. <laughs> You'll understand in real time and in due time. And yeah, our MC is definitely like 10 times older than you. Or probably at least three times. We then see G1. She's like, no, how can somebody do something like this? He has attached a bomb onto his neck. No way. He mentions, you need to put that thing in the elevator like I explained to you before. And I'm wondering if there's some sort of plan that they've made. He says, I got invited so it's natural for me to go ahead and meet Johan and so she yells out you can't beat him come on he fights in the dark he says what's my name it's Peter isn't that enough of an answer as he looks back and yo this guy got the ultimate charisma and Riz and she literally says this is what she says crap this dude is so cool and yeah I think we're all gonna agree with this anyway we see Raphael and one of the assistants says Peter might be with Cho Yun Chang and Johan is all alone wouldn't it, be be wouldn't it be better to send someone else he then says don't worry you know what type of person he is he's able to complete all of his missions 2017 we're in a village in Malta we're getting a flashback of Johan by the way Malta is a country in Europe with only like 500,000 people living he then raises rabbits, he says, but why is there an octopus hiding in here? And oh my gosh, it's Octoman, and this seems like he is actually assisting Raphael. He asks, how did he know? But Johan says, if I couldn't sense your presence, then you would have not come here, right? Octoman gets his gun ready, and yeah, you're a B-rank killer, bro, that's not gonna do anything. He then tries to shoot him, but Johan is right in front of his face and strikes him like 50 different times. He then says, if I use my hand, or if my hand was a knife, you'd be dead by 10 times. And yeah, Johan really likes his karambit. Anyway, Octoman falls on the ground, literally injured. As Raphael says, I see, you defeated that man so easily. Johan then says, what's the reason for honor being here? Because that's what Raphael is trying to represent. He says, you know, it's not honor anymore. It's a glory, and he throws a card, and it lands on the map beside Johan and Korea, and he says, I'll see you in Korea, Johan. He says, are you talking about Peter? Is that the man that's super strong? He says, he's an old man now, but I think he's better at assassinations than you. And if you are curious, well, call me, and we can definitely find out if Alipede is better than Peter. And yeah, it seems like that actually triggered our boy Alipede. Anyway, our MC is now in the basement floor level 10, and this room is very excessive because it seems to be filled with a lot of stuff and supplies. He says, Alipede, why did you want to interview me? And he is standing on top of this car, and he says, what do you mean? From the first time I met you, I kept thinking about what this strange feeling was. He says, whatever, quit yapping. What is it that you want to say? He says, you know what? This is the truth. You're Peter, aren't you? And of course, our MC's like, dang, this guy is quite sharp. He says, if you know that, then you need to die. And it seems like Alipede has a button here mentioning this is going to blow up anyone within the radius of, of course, Yon Chang Choi's collar. And he says his friend Matthias is also one of the apostles, is really good at making these things. Our MC says, if you press that switch, you'll also disappear without a trace. Obviously, he won't press that switch, but then he says, that's what I wanted. He then clicks it. And we hear, what the heck? What did I touch? They hear a beeping. And G1 says, what the? No way. 
And just at that second, we see an explosion in the building. And don't tell me that our boy Yon Chang Choi is actually gone. Alipi then says, hmm, it looks like I misjudged you. You're not Peter. If that was you, if that was actually him, then you'd be so composed right now. Oh my gosh. He says, do you know what you just did? Choi Yun Chang's head exploded. And he says, will that woman Ji Won's body be even be identifiable? And of course, Alipi says, there's something I really want to show. Somebody as confident as you, so that you'll never get up again. All the lights then go off, and he says I'm going to show you despair, as he holds his garambit. Our MC says, if I think about the past Johan, he used a special type of equipment, and yes, let's go, this guy's definitely a goat. He says he used a special type of equipment that made him undetectable to thermal lenses. And so he says that this is going to get quite annoying. He then throws some things at our MC, and our MC gets hit by it. It's of course a bit shallow though. Our MC is looking clueless right here, but our MC is probably a better actor than this dude. He is right behind him and he goes to stab our MC, and he is getting hit and we see a little blood sort of splurts come out. Our MC ponders, wait, if I really want to capture this dude, I need to crush his weapon, echolocation. And guys, I just want to say our MC is always calm and composed, he's never been like kind of out of it. Anyways, he says I can't even see him, and it's like I'm being touched and grabbed anywhere by the darkness, and yeah, this is pretty much how good this dude is. He tries to counterattack, but he gets sliced right on his shoulder, and of course Alipede says, I know what you are and what you're doing, and you don't actually have that luxury because I can see everything. He goes and hits our MC or kicks him right in the face, and he gets sent flying, but still, he is of course not on his knees yet because our MC won't give up. He then says, finally, I'll acknowledge it, you are quite dangerous. However, your great weapon is done for, as our MC lights up a flare, what the heck? He says, how about we get started? It seems like the flare gets cut up, and Alipede says, really? I thought you'd be different, but do you think you could fight me with that? Our MC just smiles, saying, hmm, don't you need, don't you know that you need to listen till the end when somebody speaking in Korean? Because I feel like the verbs or the subjects come in different places than English. Anyway, our MC says, I wasn't going to use the light. Echolocation in a dark room is a great skill, but it has a great weakness. For example, what if another wavelength and all of the sprinklers go off and that is a wavelength and of course Alec Pete says there is no way and look at this guys his echolocation is dead and dang bro I've noticed that all of these apostles actually have like a quite a unique weakness but only our MC would be able to figure that out our MC's IQ is probably 9 billion Alec Pete says what can you do this doesn't matter are you going to catch me in close range I still have extreme capabilities in that he then launches towards our MC with his knife his karambit he slashes and slashes our MC says, you've already lost, because of course, he's going through some psychological warfare. He mentions, I also know that all my comrades are alive, because for somebody who's obsessed with perfect assassination, exploding somebody is definitely not your forte. He says, what? Why did he pretend that he didn't know? Was it all for what reason was it actually for? He says, why did you lie about it? He says, I'd have to guess that maybe it's because your pride took a hit because you couldn't even scratch me last time or, I know, damage me fatally. And yeah, our MC is such a menace as he goes to take off his blazer. He says, Alipede has an inferiority complex. As he says, you should smile a little because that face does not look nice. He then says, what the heck do you know about me? And it seems... Like, we're gonna find out the truth about Johan. Anyway, we see a beautiful little rabbit right here, and he is petting it. But one of the men also mentions, hey, I want to pet it too. Or one of his, you know, I guess this is in an orphanage. He says, no, this is mine. And of course, he's blind. And so they say, hey, do you want to eat this? This tastes good. And it is obviously a fish with no meat at all. They then toss it at him, and they even hit him. And it seems like he got bullied back then. Until one day, an incident happened where he got furious. He's looking for his little rabbit, and we see him right here, and they are literally beating it up in the gymnasium room of some sorts. He says, how dare you? That's mine. He then begins to, b he bites on the foot just like the rabbit, and of course he gets beat up. He then cries in agony, and no guys, the rabbit is actually dead. And that was his last bit of confidence in the rabbit, and so that's where it started. All the lights then suddenly turned off at the basketball court, and they're wondering, what the heck, I can't see anything. He says they're the same as me, but now I can see what and where you are doing things, and he has the advantage. He punches one person, and it seems like he definitely has the advantage in the dark, and he begins to cry saying, please, spare me, no, and he says, I was really getting bullied by these guys all that time. The, of course, the keeper then walks into the gymnasium to see all- Bro, all of them are eliminated as we see Johan covered in blood. 
and he then smiles, saying, Now I'm better than them, teacher. And what a very gruel and horrible thing to you know go through and just see in general. Alapid yells, inferior or beautiful? You don't know anything. These sprinklers mean nothing to me. And bro, you're literally going to get sprinkled on and turned into a plant of some sort. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. Our MC dodges it and avoids it, but he's still sweating because he still knows that this guy is still a threat. He then stabs our MC, it seems. However... Our MC put this guy in handcuffs, and he mentions, I'm able to reach you and see you now. Our MC says 34, that's the number of vital points a human has, and our MC gets his chop ready, mentioning, I wonder how long you can last, and yeah bro, our MC is just way too prepared for any situation that he's in. He then strikes Johan in the abdomen, and he says, wait a second, this is an extremely fatal point. How the heck is this guy still enduring it? He then uses the intercostal space attack. He hits all of these things, guys, like the solar plexus, and that's gotta hurt. And of even the Adam's apple, he says no matter how strong you are, you'll still collapse. And look at this guy, he's taking it all. He says, I'll never collapse. If you were going to cuff me, you should have got on my legs as he hits our MC in the stomach. He mentions this dude's getting stronger and even stronger than before, and he even retaliates here. And he says, I was wrong. This dude's willpower is absolutely crazy. And this is definitely because of pride. And yeah, that's what's controlling him at this point. He's willing to put his life on the line a thousand different times. He says there's no choice as he chucks him towards the door, the steel door, and he still stands. He says, that wasn't a bad idea handcuffing me. However, he breaks it, saying, You should have chained my arm to yours so that I couldn't get away from you. And our MC just says, It is a shame, you know. The sprinklers are still on, so you probably can't see as well. And he's then looking behind him. It is, a, it is a sort of keypad. He says, Due to other frequencies, it's hard to use echolocation. And so he uses, he said, Oh, he says, Let's switch locations as he leaves the building that's being sprinkled on. He says, Are you sure you're okay with that? And our MC says, It's really bright there. And yep, our MC has the advantage. He says, The attack should have landed but it seems like Alipi or blocked it with his feet or with his shoe. He says, wait a second, you do know that light or dark, it's the same thing to me, and I did not expect that. Our MC then says, with his eyes covered like an absolute protagonist, I see. Johan then hits the button again, saying, the tides will be in my favor once more, and oh my gosh, the lights go off, and this time there won't be sprinklers. He, still, he says, I commend you though. Out of all the opponents I've faced, you're the first person to make him this excited since Johan, which is obviously, it's kind of sad that this guy actually passed away. He says, don't talk about that man. He was old and retired, and ooh, that's why, bro. I guarantee, bro, if Johan was in his prime, this guy would get destroyed. He then uses his echo location, and he says, you're the same. You, you rely on your sight way too much. And so you cannot block or dodge my attacks because you can't create light. He then notices our MC looking left and right and he says, Panic, you're trapped in pitch black and that's what I will use. But oh, bro, he gets punched in the face mid dialogue and yeah, that shouldn't happen. He wonders how the heck that happened, saying that there's no way a human could read those movements. He goes to attack our MC once again, but just like that, he gets uppercutted and sent flying to the steel or to the cement wall and it literally cracks. He says, no way, how can you read my attacks? He says, you know, it's true that I normally shouldn't be able to see you, but of course, if I kept fighting like that, I would have lost. He says, you were handcuffed with something that you could never get rid of, and oh my gosh, he smells something, luminescence, and our MC used glow in the light sticks to see where his fists and stuff were going, and that was actually such a big brain move. He w Bro, look at our MC here looking so cold, and Johan says, how far can this guy see in the future? And he asks when he planned this. He then says, I planned this when I was talking to Anji Wan earlier, and wow, our MC really is a legend. Alec beat hands it to him, saying, I shouldn't have fought you like this, you know, you're actually right and I was wrong, and yeah. Finally, bro, hopefully he becomes humble, but I actually doubt it. He then brings out a heat flare, saying, can you see better now? And he wonders if Alipede has two blades in his hands. He says here, take one of my knives as well. And of course, our MC says, I can't not like this dude. And yeah, I think I think this kind of reminds him of himself back then. Our MC then charges towards him and Alipede towards him as well. He says, I'm sure he was right in front of me, but this guy is so fast, I don't even know where he is anymore. Our MC then cuts him just like that, punches him just like that. And both of them get hit with the knives, but it seems like our MC has the upper hand. Our MC actually changed the grip on the Karambit, and he wonders if he's going to go from an attack above. He says, I'm going to take him out before that, but our MC swings the Karambit and uses a completely different attack. He says, what the heck? Everything Raphael said, I won't acknowledge them. 
because everything that he said is true. We go back to Malta, and Johan says, if Peter has a knife, he's got nothing on me. But Raphael says, that'd only be possible if Peter is ill, because that dude doesn't use weapons. He says, I don't know either the reason, but there's one thing that he says. He says this, those who use weapons are easy opponents, and Alipede yells out, there's no way, you're bluffing. He says I can't see him or touch him, let alone catch him. This is absolutely impossible. How is it possible? He's only been holding a knife. He says, wait a second. I understand now. I can see. Is it him? And no way did Alipi just see him for the first time with his eyes or something? I wonder what the heck this is supposed to mean. Anyway, we find out that our MC goes to hit the vanishing blow and his knife then gets cracked in half. He says, is this guy really somebody I cannot surpass? Our MC says, your pectoral muscles have ruptured, so you know you should stop. Bren, bro, our MC, our, where did our MC's injuries go? This guy is literally a goat, and it seems like he's not even breaking a sweat. Alipede is cut deeply, as you see, his kind of deep wounds here. It's not as shallow as before. He says, this guy is right. After that attack, I can no longer put my strength in my arm. He says, what's even harder to predict and understand is our MC's way of knife fighting. He mentions somebody who's barely an adult has mastered the karambit. Come on, what the heck? Our MC says, I'll be going out with my next attack. So make sure you're ready for this as he punches him right in the face. But then Alipede just bites it. And of course he goes to hit her MC with his right hand. But he gets kneed or elbowed right to the jaw. And yo, that's definitely going to leave a mark. He says that he hit his masseter muscle. And it gives him the power to bite. And so even a gorilla will open its mouth once that muscle is hit. It seems like Alipede has finally lost it all. And he says, I'll remember you forever. He says, wait a second, what's happening? He then cut the flare. It goes dark again. And we see lights from behind our MC. And it's actually the security squad. And our MC says, wait a second. Th this is pretty much like a SWAT. He says, did Alipede sense them with sound? Our MC puts his hands up in the air. And they say, chase that terrorist away. And they're talking about Alipede who had the white hair. Our MC looks at the direction where he left. And our MC is definitely not going to let this guy out or alive for longer. We are back at the first floor and the first lobby. And look how many soldiers are here. Jiwon says, did you catch Alipede, please? What happened to Songgu? He is then saying, you know what, just stay here, please. I don't even know who Songgu is. Just stay here, ma'am, trust me. We hear, wait a second, that smell. And yup, guys, I noticed it was Alipede's hair right here. If you don't know if you guys saw it. She then notices, it, notices something in her pocket. It is in Braille. And it says, let's practice our echolocation next time. And she really wonders what he is scheming. We are in the infirmary as a secretary is injured and also the other two big bodybuilders. And oh my gosh, I thankfully they are still alive. She says, be thankful that the bomb around the neck didn't actually explode. As her MC says, when did you become a spy for glory? She says, from the beginning, there are people like me hiding in different enterprises. And so Raphael is definitely thinking of ways to truly take over glory and make it for himself. Jiwon then says, "Where did? why did you even let Alipede go? He says, don't worry, that dude will help us in the future. And she says, wait, what, are you, what the heck are you talking about now? And yeah, our MC definitely is very good when it comes to dropping some mysterious things. He says, just wait and understand. We see somebody doing push-ups on top of a bottle of beer. He says, Johan, did you get rid of Choi Yun Chang? He says, I'm excited thinking about tomorrow's breaking news. He says, what do you mean he's not dead? Because it seems like Alipede told him the truth. He says, what the heck happened? He explains, Peter was not there. Of course, Raphael says, what the heck are you talking about? Somebody then walks in from the shadows saying, I see a loser who lost to Petro, or to Peter, of course, that's actually the translation. And Alipede says, shut up or I'm really going to take you out. He says, it's no fun, it's a joke. And this is Thaddeus, and oh my gosh, this guy looks definitely like he has aura. He then throws something at the dais saying, I'll put 72 holes in your face if you say anything again. He then catches his knife and he mentions, I only have seven holes in my face. And this is the dais, ranked disciple with black, absolutely onyx eyes. And he seems like a very carefree person. Anyway, he says, the world's best assassin, Alipede, huh? Against the world's best martial artist, said to possess immeasurable skill. I wonder how this would go. He says, your success rate isn't 100% anymore, Alipede. And he sticks out his tongue. Alipede goes to attack him, and he's just blocking it with his foot. He says, if you weren't blind, this would have been better. Alipede yells at him to unravel his arms, but he says, nope, nope, there's no need for that. If I do, you'll die, brother. And this guy seems to be very cocky. And hey, maybe it's for good reason. They then kick each other with both their feet and he lands in a squat and Alipede lands still in a kind of good position. Alipede then says ignoring Raphael, Hey, don't look for that young guy because I'm going to take him out. Thaddeus says, wait, what are you talking about? Huh? Where are you going my brother? Come on, 
could finish your sentence or something? And yeah, Alipede is just mysterious. He says that Sud really talks in riddles, and Raphael says yeah, and by the way, Raphael looks kind of jacked here. I wonder how he would fare against this dude. He says, by the way, big brother, what do you want me to do now? Do you want me to take out Yun Cheng? He says, no, there's actually a way to check. And of course, this guy mentions, yeah, it's that thing. He says, get the car ready, and look at this dude's back. It's a what is that though? That's that's a really scary tattoo. It's like a demon and then some sort of angel or I really don't know what that is. Anyway, he says he's actually going to see him for himself. They're then literally in the front of the building and the SWAT tell him he can't enter. But then three people get sent flying inside and it is of course Raphael and he does not give a crap. The SWAT says call for backup right now. But Raphael just says, hmm, the president of South Korea can enter inside, right? Then how did I just do that? Does that mean I'm above the president? And look at his smile, guys. This is very crazy. And yeah, Raphael is not normal. He says, President Choi is in here somewhere, and Peter might be here too. He says, very good. First, how about I see President Choi, and his eyes turn red, and I can guarantee that this guy is not sane at all. And the reason why is because he did not like the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, make sure to like and also comment down below what you rate this series. I rate it a 10 out of 10, it's my favorite manhwa this year. The next parts will be coming out soon, I hope you guys stay tuned for that. And without further ado, I hope you guys have a blessed day.